My guest speaker today is Ryan Zajek, who's a city engineer for the city of Edwardsville. I had the uh, extreme pleasure of working with him for about 10 years, and uh, he's left them in more than capable hands when I retired. What I'm, I want him to address is uh, the city of Edwardsville is contracted with Mid, uh, Mid Eastern Plumbing to provide an upgrade to all of the water meter reading systems. Um, they started on this in January, um, and he was conveying to me that they're approximately a third to a half done now. So, Ryan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is my one prop I brought, if uh, I can pass it around the room. <laughs> if you think that's heavy, you should see the old brass, solid brass one that we are replacing those. Um, so that is a brand new uh, three quarter inch electric electromagnetic eye pearl meter. That is what we are replacing uh, throughout the entire city. Uh, we're currently on phase one of our meter replacement program. We have just under 10,000 meters citywide that we have to replace. Uh, this first phase is about 3,000 meters we're going through. We should be wrapping up this first phase shortly, actually. Um, but these new electromagnetic meters are cool. Um, we can pretty much know exactly if there's a, a water main break in the area, if you have a leak on the toilet, uh, if you turn your water back on after you've been shut off for non-pay. Um, we've had to actually recently do that. So um, yeah, these these the technology that goes with this that we are able to help our residents out is, is incredible compared to the old analog meters. The old analog meters would slow down after a few years. I mean, it, it literally had a, a a dial on it that spun as the, as you ran water through. And, and over the years, you'd have buildup. It'd slow down on these new ones. You, you can see, you can look through. There's no moving parts with it. Uh, it's it's really cool technology that we've been implementing for probably the last eight years or so. We've been putting these in whenever we replace them. Uh, but as Dennis said, we did contract with Mid-Eastern Plumbing and Corn Main um, to install these meters, purchase and install these meters. Where um, we put had to put antennas on the two water towers that are in town to collect the data that uh, these meters put out. So we started to really just install these around the areas of the water towers. We have two meter reading. Well, we have eight routes that we our meter readers go out and read the meters by hand and with a touchpad. We chose two routes that were around the water towers so that we can make sure that signals were being received, that we weren't gonna have any issues uh, and everything's going great with it so far. Um, there are have been some uh, residents that were concerned about what, you know, what kind of radiation these put off and radio waves these put off. Um, these actually operate on a normal radio frequency just above your, your television antenna frequency. Uh, but instead of the thousands of kilowatts that those put off, this literally puts out one watt of one watt burst of uh, of a, the radio frequency once a day. So at about a six once six tenths of a second burst. So uh, that's not really a concern, you know. That we have. as soon as you walk outside, we're getting bombarded with hundred thousand times more radio wave frequency than these things are putting out. So. Um, but it's it's pretty cool technology, and it, we're going to be really excited once we install these throughout the whole city. We'll be able to obviously meet our water accurately. We'll be able to account for water loss more accurately, uh, which all is a return for customer savings uh, for your water. So we don't have to essentially account for lost water um, for leaks. You know, toilet. No one wants to pay for water going right through your, you know, and right into the toilet and into the sewer. So the water, the money that you save also saves us by not having to expand treatment plants and uh, water and sewer. So this is really just a, an overall benefit, not only uh, to the city, but to the, the consumer itself. Um, there's really, I mean, a bunch more projects that we're doing with uh, and company with this. Anytime we do a water main replacement project, every house on that, we're replacing these meter pits and meters installing all new setters and service lines. Um, so this has really just been, become a, the base program of our, our water distribution system. So it's, uh, it's been pretty neat. It's, that's really, yeah, question. Two questions. Yeah. One, what's the difference in cost between the old meter and the new meter? 
Part of that. Yeah, they're actually pretty similar. These are only 125 bucks piece. Um, the radio as an additional cost, that's 60 bucks. Um, and that's about what the old bridge cost as well. I have a question for the plumbing in general. Because walking around town, a lot of construction going on in the city. There's a lot of cast iron pipe in the ground. Yes. <laughs> What's the process of getting some of that all over? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. We've actually been implementing a, a capital replacement program for our old cast iron mains. Um, one of the mains actually on Main Streets dates back to the 1800s. Um, so what we do is essentially lay a whole new water line, so, so pretty much parallel to the old main, put new services, install a whole new meter pits, put these new meters in. And then once we get the whole water main tested, approved, ready to go, we just switch the services at the end and abandon Cap and abandon the old man place. Um, miles and miles and miles. <laughs> so, yes. What do you do with all the scrap grass and other numbers? That's a great question. So we are actually saving it all. Um, we've got two options. We, we could just go to a local scrapper, but we've had we've seen other municipalities actually place the scrap for bid online. Um, we haven't done either of those yet, but that's what we're looking at doing, and that's what other municipalities have seen. Uh, the most successful. So. I think I have a question. First, uh, that model, is that for a very year? Is that a year uh, in my agent? Is that going to be the same model? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if it's in your bed, yeah. We've got meter pits on the outside, and we also, there's also actually throughout the whole city, I mentioned we had about 10,000 meters. It's about two thirds in or two thirds meter pits, one third inside houses. So mm -hmm. if, uh, yeah, you're replacing your, we will be having to schedule and get inside your house to replace the water meter. The other question is, um, if we did some more meters at fire, when they were things were going on, uh, in the Missouri Public Service Commission, we required any tap flow meter that right from the old meter, that they were not calibrated correctly, meter that you go uh, and collect more money from the customer for three years or, or provide a refund. Is that a requirement for the ICC? We are not regulated by the ICC at all for our water distribution. It's, since we're our own local municipality, if we are private, if if this was the only, if I was the only American up here talking, yes, we would be. Uh, ICC would uh, oversee us, but since we are a local municipality and run our own water distribution system, we are not overseen by ICC. You process a certain amount of gallons of water, mm -hmm. and you're you're Paid for a certain amount of gallons of water. What's the difference? Ranges time of year, really. Overall, season wise, about 25% loss. About 25% loss? Yep. Can you put any kind of meters in between to find areas that are losing a lot of water? That would be ideal if we didn't have all our water mains looped. Um, that's what we really pride ourselves on throughout our system is our entire system is looped. So essentially if there's a main leak somewhere or break somewhere, we can isolate that and everything else still be fed. So if I had meters set up throughout the city, I, it would be tough to find positions where, you know, to, you know, sections of the city, really, it'd be probably too large where it wouldn't be effective. It is, and a lot of it is from these old meters. Um, we are actually, we think about 10, 10 to 15% is from our old meters um, just being locked up. It's, we, do, we run a report, uh, Dennis, that's what he used to do, runs, runs a report for our water crews on stop meters, and we see about 10 a week. Um, so we were hoping to have a contract, you know, have another contract. If we would have kept delaying this a few more years, we would have just ended up replacing all our meters through old stop meters. <laughs> so, um, uh, sure. yep. Yes. Uh, Jeff, yep. Oh, no. Um, so, if something is like like Eden Village or Meridian Village or like the Trace Apartments, is that one meter for the whole thing? One meter per building, and it'll be a lot bigger, heavier meters. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we also meet, you know. Whatever service goes into the building, we meter the whole thing. The fire line, I'm going to say domestic, essentially your house service. So let's say, um, let's trace. Yeah. Those actually have eight inch meters on. So one eight inch fire line, one meter per building. Okay. So we need to do the fire, domestic, everything for one meter. And it's up to if I want to say um, Whispering Heights 
installed their own individual meters for their residents so they could bill more accurately to their residents, where some just say, well, we pay the whole water bill and include right. it in the cost of your early. So it's, that's up to them how they want to structure and do that. And when you come to like a regular personal house, is this the only thing you're doing or do you have to like rip out some other old equipment? No, we're just replacing the old, just an old uh, brass meter and putting that one in. So if your if your meter is less than uh, five six years old, would it be replaced? If it's been less than five to six years old, you probably already have one of those. Yeah, we wouldn't touch it. We've been putting these meters in. I think Great Tim Grand Avenue was our first project that we did these on. So 2014. So if you're meter, you have a meter since 2014, it's one of those. What's your projected date to purchase? So that's a great question. So what we've I mentioned uh, our water meter reader routes. We've got um, routes that our guys go out and read the meters on. Well, we've completed, we're going to be completing two full routes of this. Uh, so that frees up our water meter readers two full weeks. So we're going to start in those two weeks, they're going to start installing these throughout the rest of the city. So um, we really kind of don't know how quickly that's going to get done. Uh, we hope, though, in the next two years, essentially, to get through everybody. So water meter readers are going to be obsolete. Right. They're going to be rolled into our distribution system maintenance. So because you could always look it up and Correct. Um, we, I mean, um, Tim, you, you, Tim, I, I keep referring to him. He's been he's been in public works. you were with us for how many years? <laughs> <laughs> and we never have enough people to help maintain our system. So being able to utilize our meter readers and get them rolling in on our distribution system means valve exercising, hydrant flushing, water main break repairs. It's just helps us out tremendously have more people available. Is the plan to eventually go to monthly bill? That would be a great question for the finance department. <laughs> Dennis, what do you think of that? Or monthly billing instead? <laughs> Number one, you're gonna it's probably gonna cost you about ten thousand dollars two months for mailing costs because you're doubling your mailing costs. Um, so where you're going to pick it up on collecting a little early, as long as prime is less than five percent, you're never going to you're not going to have enough offset. It'll, it'll be a net increase in cost. I see. I do see with our water rates the way they're going. We did three years of larger rates increases. Not only pay for the stuff like this, but our water distribution system capital plan. Um, with in a way inflation has been, I mean, you, you know, it's been nine, ten percent and everything else, but utility wise, it's way higher than that. Um, essentially, we've seen a whole 25 percent annual rate increase be wiped out just by inflation. So, we are probably going to have to look at doing another rate increase in the next couple of years. Um, and when you have those kind of higher rates and higher costs, having a uh, getting a bill for two months worth now becomes a a two three hundred dollar bill for some people whereas if you get it monthly you know you can budget yourself more accurate so i think it may just be a, a benefit to the customer to instead expect them to save up 250 300 bucks for two months get it on a monthly basis and just maybe a benefit more to the community i don't know if you see it, so it's more um, not the building or yeah we do we do right, you said the yeah. No, we, you can you can sign up for to just that's how I live. I have just an email and okay. mm -hmm. um, yeah, any question. We put an incentive out on several years ago. I don't know if I would be leaving shortly, but I'm not sure how it came through. Well, if it's ten thousand dollars to send out mailings. There's ten ten thousand customers. Yeah. So, you would think like, they give the city a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, is there any I can answer any question on our water distribution system, water treatment, anything. Uh, measure the water flow here? Uh, electromagnetic, yeah. Okay. No. Ryan, does this have any impact? And I this goes back to the olden days that people with sprinkler systems. Or pools would be charging the same water 
but but there were, were provisions put in place that they wouldn't be charged too or all. Uh, Correct. Yeah, we still have our winter averaging in place. So if you have a sprinkler system or filling up pools or something, you know, if you're going to fill up a pool, a pool, pool. <laughs> a pool completely, you can call us before we'll go out, read the meter. And then after you fill up your, you know, use 10,000 gallons of water in a pool, we'll read it again so you don't get built that sewer. But for sprinklers, we have the winter averaging where essentially your sewer during the summer months is built off of your winter water usage average. I have that exact number. Uh, I want to say it's 130, for some reason, 132.9 miles is sticking in my head. Not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any, any questions? Anything water sewer related? Any infrastructure at all in the city? What's the smaller line line that still Three quarter inch. We've got three quarter inch mains still serving houses. Now, granted, those only serve maybe two, three houses. Um, I actually know the street I'm on. I'm served by a two inch water water line, and that serves about eight houses. And I, pressure wise, I haven't really ever noticed anything. But, but it's not enough for No, not at all. And that's what that's if you um a lot of places out east have gone switched to water main lining like we do with our sewer mains for to keep repair them. We can't line our water mains because we don't they're not sized properly for fire flow. So we have to install a new water mine line when we're going through replacement. Yep. What's the old you Main Street right now is the one we know of. I want to say it's 1897. I've got a broken piece of it in my office that there's a stamp on it. <laughs> I should have brought it. And that's actually, we will be replacing the water main on Main Street with a grant that we received from the state, uh, a Main Street uh, revitalization grant. Um, we're working on design of that right now. Hopefully by next summer we're going. And so if uh, you're traveling down Main Street, I'm um, Sorry, it's going to be a mess for. <laughs> It'll be essentially in the hundred block from just north of Hillsboro. If you remember where we stopped by the MCT station, all the way to um, the Napa Auto Parts store. We're going to get that tied all through and looped. And yeah. <laughs> September first. Oh no! But yeah, we're. Uh, so and then actually St. Louis Street will be resurfacing St. Louis Street. We're going out to bid on that this August. We're going to start pretty much the day after the criterium. Um, for that little wedge of St. Louis Street and Main Street, we are it'll probably end up scheduling so around what that. We have to do shut down. We'll figure it out. We'll be creative. Though. Think so we won't be ripping up the pavement. We'll be we're going to go underneath the sidewalk along okay. basically the buildings. We're going to have to rip out all the streetscape lighting and put the water main in there because there's a sewer main and then an at and fiber main on the other side that we got us basically the only place for us to put our water main is on the, the east side of Main Street right underneath the sidewalk. So the sidewalk could be ripped out and import and we'll pretty much have to be pouring right behind us as we're going. So it will be. As many, as many water main breaks as we've had in that area, we, it's almost like we can't even guarantee water service to them pretty soon. I just started asking the conversation when we started the criteria and the streets were a lot Saturday. From the works I got, wasn't very pleasant. So I couldn't walk with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll plug uh, in for, since this room, we are going to be resurfacing Troy Road um, from Collinsville. IDOT's going to be doing it from Collinsville, essentially to Edwards Zone. We're going to be taking up with that going all the way to Taco Bell, essentially. It'll be nighttime work over the next four weeks. So be aware of that. They're correct. They are starting on the north end. So, so if you increase fire flows, fire flows, how many blanks state line they're going to be in this one? Should we do race then? <laughs> 
that is an added benefit. We are we are putting fire flow to areas. <laughs> we are be, being able to provide fire flow to areas that never even close to had proper fire flow. So that's out Chapman Street. We just did the water main. North Buchanan Street. We just did the water main. Uh, North Kansas. We're doing it right now. East High. That entire area never had proper fire flows. The entire, literally the entire northeast corner of town, and now it has amazing fire flows with the water, those main water mains we just did. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Thank you. So kind of a funny story related to this. Um, we are redoing a house in Staunton and I get a call from the city water people and they said, oh boy, we've noticed an increase in activity. You know, your bill is a lot higher than it's been because we're not living there. So it should be, it's been like $25. Well, we had the plumber come over and look and the lady said, because we don't have the new digital meters everywhere, we would have called you a lot earlier. We would have noticed this a lot sooner, but I, uh, you know, sorry, Charlie, you're on the list to get your digital meter at some point. So anyway, the plumber came over and looked and we had a sump pump in the basement that my darling son had his drum set down there and a drumstick had rolled into the sump pump and caused the little thing to stay up. So the water was flowing the whole time. So thank you, Sam, for that $200 water bill. <laughs> and thank you, Brian. And on behalf of the Tazoski family and home nursery, the Lovely centerpieces for you or your wife. Okay, 50 50. Oh, Jennifer.